Hello, this video was kind of a failure. My audio was just wacky. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I just had the mic gain up too high. Lots of background noise. Try to edit it all out. You can only do so much. Also, the light was changing as I was recording. Very hard to fix that. All sorts of things happened. Also, every print I tried ended up looking pretty bad, not how I intended. It's okay. One of the ideas that I have about this video is that there's no right or wrong way to do it. But if there was a wrong way, I figured that out. And you can watch it. All that aside, I had a great time making the video. I learned a lot about editing and audio setup, so the next one will be better. But I hope you enjoy this video, learn something from it. And uh, get off my back. I'm new to YouTube, okay? What's up, YouTube? This is my little back porch sunroom. It's where I do most of my marbling projects. This is my cat, Torbjorn. He's the best. This is my backyard, I know. It looks uh, pretty well kept. It's a lot of work. Not easy. We got another little cat back there. I don't think Torby is too happy about that. Let's uh, get to marbling, eh? Today I'm going to show you a little bit about a recent interest of mine, uh, Suminagashi marbling. I noticed a lot of the tutorials online are mostly middle-aged white ladies that just want to like make pretty scarves and books. Nothing wrong with that. So I just thought, why not make another tutorial? There's about 10 on there. I've watched all of them. They're decent. A lot of information is covered. My uh, microphone setup might pick up things like dogs barking, neighbors arguing, gunshots, things like that. You can't all have perfectly uh, noise canceling and isolated sunrooms. So forgive me for that. I'm gonna walk through some of the supplies I have here. Sumi and Sumi Nagashi comes from ink in Japanese. Um, I have seen some people on uh, YouTube call it Chinese marbling. That's completely wrong. Sumi Nagashi is a Japanese word. It means floating ink. So here's the ink. Get some of this stuff at most art stores. It's good stuff. Shake it before you use it. Um, I got some brushes. You want them to have a point. Other than that, I don't think there's any other completely necessary qualifiers. You just want them to be pointy and not tiny. This is water with about three drops of soap in it. I've heard that you can use other things like uh, Kodak Photo Flow, but I'll be completely honest, I have no idea what that is, and if it has Kodak in the name, it's probably gonna be more expensive than dish soap. I'm gonna recommend dish soap, works great. Uh, other things I got, I got a big basin here. You can use a small basin. You can use a circular basin, a hexagonal basin. Just needs to be a basin. Pretty shallow is better. And uh, water. So I have that here. I'm gonna add some water. Don't need a ton of it. Just like two inches deep. Or less. Maybe about a fingertip, which we're not quite at. One more uh, supply I forgot to mention that's not necessary but is uh, very tasty is uh, LaCroix. So you're going to fill your water up about a fingertip, give or take, fingernail maybe, unless you got really long, freakishly long nails, then uh, I'm not really sure what you should do here. Knuckle. Dip your knuckle. That's about how much you want if you have freakishly long nails. Next thing you're going to do, get your brush saturated with that ink. Oh, actually, this step is not completely necessary, but I've seen a lot of people do it. Um, I don't think it's super necessary if you are doing just some practice prints like I'm about to do. But I'll show you how to do it. Uh, since you have a surface of water here, it's bound to get dust and hairs and fibers, especially if you have a cat like I do. So you just want to take some uh, take some scratch paper, something that doesn't really 
matter a whole lot. It can be newspaper, you know, cardboard, paper bag. Something that doesn't matter a whole lot. And um, just skim the water with it. Pick up all that dust. You're just going to kind of saturate your brush. Um, you don't want it dripping wet like that. So you just kind of got to wipe off the excess. Three little wipes, usually good. Do the same with your soapy brush. Give it some wipes. See, we got a nice, nice point on that. And you're ready to go. What you're gonna do is just start dipping. Just the tip of the brush in here. And you can see it'll pool pretty immediately. And then you're gonna dip your brush with the soap in and the soap will push the ink away from it because the ink is suspended in the water. And so you just keep going back and forth. It's not very difficult. Just go left and right. And that's pretty much all there is to the first step of the process. Just gonna mess around until you get a design you like. You can add as many rings as you like or as few. This is just like the most basic of ways to do it. You can see I got a little variance in the line there. It's okay, it doesn't really matter. Over time, as you do it more, you kind of realize why things are happening. But there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just kind of do it and it makes itself. It's kind of nice. I do a lot of drawing that's like very precise. I'm trying to make every line count and make it anatomically correct and look right in perspective and this is kind of a nice break from that because I have so little control over what happens. Even if I just bump the table like this, I can change my design. It's um, kind of like channeling chaos into a bucket of water, which is very meditative because you, you just can't control it. But over time you figure out you know, little things that make things happen one way or another to kind of wrangle the ink and the soap how you want it. Just kind of go till you get the print looking how you want. I kind of like to end mine with three little dots in the middle like this. Boop. Boop. Yeah, a little bigger. What you can do now is mess with it. You don't have to. You could print that and it looks pretty good. Um, but it's fun to mess with it. I got a little pipette here. You can use your mouth or a straw, but you can just kind of release some air into it. Looks like a strange foot, maybe, with a, a big wart on it. That looks pretty good. This is the harder part. So, you get your piece of paper. Lots of different papers uh, work, some better than others. Um, I'll illustrate that now. Here's some past ones I've done. This one is on some origami sample paper. I'm not sure what kind of paper it is. It's very thick and green. I like did a double print on that. Looks pretty good. This is on some rice paper and it did not go very well. You see there's very low contrast. Um, it's very fragile, not very flat. Just didn't turn out very well. But this was also on a different brand of rice paper. And this one turned out really well. There's good contrast here. I did like a lighter version behind it. So I'm not really sure what the answer is with rice paper. Um, I made sure both were like sulfite free and this one just didn't work as well. This is also, uh, I think like a bamboo paper maybe from Awagami. It looks pretty cool. It's a little bit more grainy. Nothing wrong with that. If you don't want that, don't use this paper. This is also Awagami Kitakata Select, whatever that means. That's a little drawing from beforehand. It's okay. Just print right over it. And here's another one. This one's pretty cool. 
I got like a weird ripple effect when I printed it, so I got like a fun little wave. But right now I'm just gonna use some sheets out of a sketchbook. I'm not sure how they're gonna work, but uh, I'm just gonna go for it. Um, what you wanna do is just lay it down slowly. Wasn't the best I could have done because I hit the corner there, but it's okay. Make sure it's nice and flat. And I think a good rule of thumb is once it starts curling up, you want to pull it up and then rinse the ink. And this one was not my best. It's okay though. And then you've got a good print. And I'm going to set it over here on my little sheet of paper to dry stuff on. All right. Off camera, just because I had a wet drying print in my hand, I couldn't really show you. Dabbed it with a paper towel, so, and I was reusing a paper towel because you gotta save the earth, and I do this pretty often, and I wanna just go through roll after roll of paper towel. If you wanted, you'd use an old shirt. Um, maybe you've got like an old Green Day shirt or something lying around. Um, something else like that you don't need anymore. You never really needed it in the first place. So you could cut that up, maybe use that to like, Pull some of that excess water off, but you see the clarity like increased a lot once I dabbed off that excess. Pretty decent print, not my best, but again, I've never used this paper before, and every paper you use works completely differently. It's kind of part of the fun is figuring out what you like. I really like how subtle the grays are on this actually. Very nice gradients in there, but sometimes when you do it, you just get pure black lines. See what else we can do. Again, no need to do this, but you want to do it in between each print. If it's a print you care about, just take that useless piece of paper you've got lying around, drag it through the water, pick up any extra hairs, dirt, anything like that. I'm going to re-wet my brush here. Make sure to scrape off the excess. And do the same with the soapy. And you can kind of play around with how loaded you want your brush to be because if uh, it's not very loaded, not very much ink is going to pool out. So it'll be a smaller, thinner, less active ink blot, so to speak. Or if you do a lot of ink, it's going to pool out like crazy. So you have a couple different options. Boom. You can kind of see I'm just barely sticking the tip of that in. If you go too deep, you're going to get all these little inks sinking down at the bottom. They're not going to show up on your print, but they do make it harder to see what you're doing and how clean your design is. So, can leave it in for longer, just a little bit. Um, so this is just a very basic suminagashi. I plan eventually to just really go wild with this stuff. Um, the basic concept is the pigments float on the water and the surfactant or the soap or the Kodak photo flow if you're a rich bitch push water away or in this case water that has uh, ink pigments in it. That's very basic and I kind of like that about this. There is also Turkish marbling um, that you've probably seen more of. Lots of more like vibrant colors and crazy designs because you're using much more elastic, thick paint. You use acrylic paint in that on thickened water. And that's cool. But it requires a lot more setup and materials. And I just like how simplistic this is. Um, however, I do plan on making it not simple and adding strange chemicals to the water, uh, freezing the water, boiling it, doing all sorts of stuff to try to just mess with the pigment on top of the water here and get some interesting prints. Um, I also have some good ideas on using the uh, designs that I make and incorporating it with my other art. For instance, using these as like uh, patterns to like wrap around cars. It's an idea or, you know, well, I don't want to give away all my good ideas until I do it myself. So this is just the first Suminagashi video of many. And the other one's going to be a lot more crazy. And soon I will monopolize YouTube because truly... There are very few high quality Sumi videos. And I don't know if this is a, a high quality, but it is a Sumi video. And if half the videos on YouTube are me messing around with it, that should get some traction, but I don't know. 
sometimes your design will start floating out like this. You'll get weird little, you know, shapes coming out of it. That's okay. Last time I just kind of messed with it by running my, um, or blowing some air into it. This time I'm going to do something different. We got an interesting, interesting pattern there. Oh, also, I just want to, I just got this bin, like, unpacked and ready to go. And there's an interesting label on the bottom of it. Reproductive harm. I'm not really sure what's up with that. It's just a plastic bin, but um, I guess, guess I should put that in the video. If you do suminagashi with um, certain certain bins, you may not be able to have children. Put ink on water at your own risk. Let's go this way now. Very simple, very fun. You just kind of mess around, you find things you like. Cool. Kind of looks like a like a face. You got like some eyeballs and a big mouth. We can work with that. So now I'm just gonna take my brush again. Maybe add a little more ink here. Add a little more ink here. Give him uh, like whites of his eyes. Fill in those. We can maybe give him uh, some nostrils. And then, uh, I, I don't really know what to do here. Maybe just some... So, it's interesting because traditionally people don't really draw. And that's something that I noticed about all these YouTube videos of... They're doing these videos and they just do the very basic shapes and they get a print and then, you know, they sell them or I don't know what they do with them. But I'm really interested in kind of the controlling the abstract art aspect of it. You got a creepy face there. Let's print that. Now, last time I lost some of the contrast of my lines. I think partially because I left the print in too long. So this time I'm just going to lay it down and then I'm going to pull it off pretty quick. Let's see how it goes. pretty good. Make sure all four sides are down in the water. It's starting to curl, so I'm just going to pull it up. And that's pretty frightening, I'm not going to lie. But again, we're losing a lot of that contrast and cleanliness. So this is maybe a bad tutorial video. I know I said I was going to dominate the Suminagashi YouTube market, but that could definitely be better. That's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna dab it off now. Keep kind of dabbing off the excess water here. Here's the last one that's drying. Looks pretty good. Have a cool vibe too. You can see we got some little ink spots down there where it sunk. Like a big mushroom cloud. That did not really work at all. Oh well. 
So yeah, I still have not found a paper that works incredibly well, that is cheap and easily gotten. Some of the rice paper, it's like coronavirus time, so I don't know where to find a lot of the paper I've used that I liked, not at my art store for a reasonable price. Um, so maybe one day I'll be able to get that paper again that I really liked. But, well, and what's interesting too is sometimes you ruin a print and it just doesn't look good, but then you turn it over and you have like this kind of nice, this kind of nice marbling. Um, it's like the more unintentional stuff that happens. And so I could just later, once this dries, print again over it and get something else cool out of it. Or draw on it. Use it as a background or drawing. Not all is lost when you do something like that. See, look, there we still kind of have a little, little mushroom cloud. It looks okay. So, I'm gonna put this over here to dry and end the video, I think.